this is gonna be a fun episode for Work Woman. Welcome back. Will had a brilliant idea. He was like, what if we toured the office? It's like, hmm, let's think about that. Yes, I think people wanna know this stuff. If you don't wanna know this stuff, uh, just you know, go on to the next episode, but uh, tell your friends that they should come back to this one because it's gonna be a fun one. Okay, for those of you who are still around, let's talk about the different things that I put in my space and the reason behind it. Where you spend your space is important. Like you are here, wherever you work from, eight, nine, 10 hours out of any given day. And so the things that you put in your space, they either inspire you, they drain you, they remind you, they motivate you. And I give you full permission to be a complete weirdo when it comes to how particular you like your space, because you're about to find out how much of a weirdo I am as it comes to my space. So let's start with the work woman candle. Now, not every candle that I have actually says work woman on it. This is not something that I order in mass bulk. However, that's not a bad idea. This was a gift from the incredible Brooke. Uh, she gave this to me as a Christmas gift. And first of all, I just love candles. Like scents make me happy. Um, but it's also, it's also something that's really inviting. I think that when team members come into my office, sometimes the conversations are difficult and I wanna make them feel comfortable. As a leader, it is not my role to make people feel like as soon as they sit down across from me, like it's gonna go bad or it's gonna be a difficult conversation. I wanna put them at ease. And I think that just having something as simple as a candle there helps contribute to that. Maybe I should ask one of my team members that. Also, burning candles is a reminder of this thing that I used to hold on to, which is, oh, I get this candle and it's so cool and it's the only one that I've ever gotten. Like it says work woman, maybe I should just burn this on special occasions. Forget special occasions, drink the wine, pop the champagne, burn the candle, use the fragrance, like use things that you are given because it makes those little moments throughout the day not feel like you're restricting yourself or like you have to hold back, like you can, Use any moment to be able to, hey, wait, this work woman candle is freaking awesome. I'm gonna use it. I'm not gonna feel like I have to save it for a rainy day, so to speak. Okay, next up. I have a whole little list here of all the things I wanna show you and the intentionality behind each of them. The lotion. This is a little similar to the candle situation. This is my favorite lotion that I have ever gotten. Our controller, Alexis, gave this to me. Fun fact, Brandon also refuses to shower in nothing else from a um, body soap standpoint. Like, this shit is hard to find, and but he finds it because it is his favorite body lotion, not body lotion, um, also not body oil, it's body wash. It just honestly smells like heaven. So I put this on, I normally do this as a little like a side note. I normally do this when I'm having a stressful conversation because I see it, it's kind of hidden. I like a minimalist desk situation, but I keep this in my eye shot to just like remind myself of, you know, everything's good. My hands are soft. Uh, I can move through whatever difficult conversation this is. Sometimes my hands like get a little like sweaty when I'm about to do something that I'm nervous about. So I'll put lotion on. It's kind of weird, isn't it? I've never really thought about how weird that is that I put lotion on top of my clammy hands. I'll check out if that's sanitary and if it's not, I will stop doing that. Okay, on to the next thing. This little whiteboard, you're gonna find that most of the stuff that I'm talking to you about is a gift uh, because I take gifts really seriously. And when somebody gives me something, I actually, like I really wanna use it if it's something that I like, obviously. But Buck Wise, our chief marketing officer, gave this to me for some random occasion. And I like it because it's a little whiteboard. I'll get to the whiteboard thing that's very important here in a second, but it's a whiteboard straight in front of my computer. And so these are two quotes that I've had on here for a while. You're either adding value or you're taking up space. This one's equally my favorite, outwork everyone. I just, whenever I look down, whenever I'm having like an in-between moment, I'll be eating my Chipotle. It'll probably come in pretty soon here. Like, it just reminds me, it's something that I'm not just like in la-la land with my thoughts, it redirects, I'm like, outwork everyone. Oh yeah, I can work harder. Like, it's a, it's a trigger for me. Additionally, uh, Bethany Frankel is one of my idols. She has been for a while, and a disappointing moment for me last year was this show. I applied for the show, I got to the final rounds for the show, and they didn't choose me. But uh, during that 
show process, I like went to town studying her. And one of my favorite quotes that she have has is sitting here on my computer, which says, work hard and be better than the person next to you. Be the best. I'm on it. I got it. I got you. And I just loved that. I was like, yeah, you're right. I'm on it. I got it. I got you. It's never, no, I can't do this. Or let me think about it. It's like, I got it. I'm the person that can handle it. I do that every single day in order to like live into this idea. So next up on my desk, you will see this range of books. These are all really important books to me. These are all books that have changed my life. Uh, if you haven't read each and every one of them, you absolutely should. Sell or Be Sold was the first Grant Cardone book that I ever started with. Obviously, the 10x rule has made a massive impact on this whole business. Um, Brandon's first book, The Emergency Business Response. I have to support him. And fun little fact, I wrote one of the chapters. He does not give me any explicit credit. Uh, but I did, and that's facts. So next time you see him, and if you read the book, know that the People chapter was written from yours truly. Okay, uh, part of the reason that I keep these books here is because I use them. So as you're thinking about your office space, like what do you use that can help people visualize what you're talking about? When I'm on a phone call with a platform review client, I have a platform right there. When I'm talking on a 10X employee call, I have the books that I'm referring to right there that I can just pull up. And so, yes, it's you know a brand touch point to have these books here, but it's also my way of giving visuals to things that I often find myself referring to so that it's quick, easy access right from my computer. You would never know this, I have a space heater at my feet at all times. The space heater is a staple. That thing is on constantly. The only time it's not on is when I'm recording this podcast because it makes a lot of noise. I've had this for six years. The space heater has like followed me through every office. The noises, I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this, but it like makes me so happy when I hear this noise in the morning. It's the first thing. It's the first thing that I hear every morning. It's one of the first things that I do. Speaking of first things that I do in the morning, normally, I do not just have the Work Woman logo hanging out behind me on a day to day. Uh, I have Pandora playing, and it is almost always nine times out of 10, the What's Love PlayStation. No, no, no. It's almost always the What's Love Station from Fat Joe. It's clean so that our team members don't have to hear explicit lyrics. However, that is what I'm listening to constantly. And so when Fat Joe showed up at GrowthCon this year and I was singing every word, that is why I'm a big Fat Joe fan. Fun fact. All right, next up. This Starbucks cup, I'm sure looks familiar. It's practically in every single Workwoman episode or it's like on the floor from the Workwoman episode. But we just got these brand new Cardone Ventures mugs. And so I'm gonna start using this. This is what you should do when you have a brand. Put your freaking brand everywhere. Put it on your coffee cups. Put it in materials that you can use. The Workwoman brand is on this candle. Like you are promoting the thing that is that you're here for. Like I am here in order to make sure that this company is successful. That is my number one role as I walk into this office every day. And so if I know that, everything that I can should have a Cardone Ventures promotion, should be able to link back to, oh, you want one of these cups? Join our 10X Owners Live call and we can talk about it. It's just this constant area of promotion. I tell people like you should never use paper. Paper is not smart. Paper is uh, really like a time suck. Like you should put everything digitally. You should track it so that it can move to lo from location to location. However, when I read books or important documents that I actually need to like make highlights and notations on that I refuse to do in a digital copy, I use my highlighters and these are my favorite highlighters. Um, it's the Sharpie highlighter and look at this tip. I've been using these highlighters for, since I can remember, since I was, you know, a four point student in high school, uh, because it just, it's the perfect highlight, the way that it's shaped, the color, it doesn't bleed through. I'm a pen snob, that's also another little fun fact. And this one is particularly fantastic. I would highly recommend that you pick up the Sharpie highlighter Smear Guard. 
I've talked about this a couple times before, but the computer background that I have really matters to me. I always use it as either a way to inspire me to push forward or it's a piece to remind me of a special moment if I'm going through something more difficult or if I want to push myself and get back to that moment. Like wh whatever is going on in my life, I really use my screensaver on my computer and on my phone as like this really intentional touch point in my life. So for my desk computer, this photo of Brandon and myself. This might just look like any old photo of the two of us. However, this was really impactful for us because this photo is the first picture that we took in front of our plane. And he and I had so many conversations about buying a plane that just didn't feel real when it happened. And we would talk about it and we would think about it and we would get excited, but it was just like, it, was, it wasn't a real thing for us until we made it a real thing. And for me, this is a reminder of those moments where I'm like, I wanna do this and I might get scared about it. Well, wait a second, we were terrified when we first started having these conversations and it actually happened and it's part of our life. And we can do that. We have the ability to do that. And so when I'm in that phase, like this is a really important picture for, as a reminder for me of, hey, wait a second, he and I freaking made it for a long time. We were like against the odds. There's nobody supported the relationship. There were a couple people, but he and I have, have made it to this place. We were able to purchase this thing. It's less about the thing and more about the ability that I have, the ability that he has, and the ability that we have together in order to actually create the goals that we have and, and make them reality. So your desk background, desktop background is important. Like put images on there, put quotes, put things that are gonna pull you into this next phase, this next thing that you wanna be creating. Highly recommend that. Okay, next up is, because you're sitting at this desk between eight to 10, maybe 12 hours, ideally you're doing things that are healthy for you. Like I'm not a proponent of an unhealthy work environment. I think it's important to walk. I think it's important to move around so that you're not just constantly hunched over doing this all the time. So I have this ball chair and you might be like, wait a second, I've watched every single work woman episode and I've never seen you in a ball chair. That's because the ball chair is so low that the microphone doesn't actually work. So we switch out before every episode, uh, my ball chair, but this chair forces my posture, forces me to sit up straight. It like promotes a healthy lifestyle. It More than it actually promoting a healthy lifestyle, I don't know how much of all of that stuff I necessarily believe with that chair. But when I'm about to sit in this uncomfortable chair, as opposed to this very comfortable chair, it reminds me that, okay, instead of having tacos for lunch, maybe I should have a chicken salad. Like it's a small thing in my environment to remind me I choose healthy things. I choose things that are going to create this higher sense of well being. Uh, and so this chair is very important to me. And you should either get one or put something in your environment that does promote a healthy lifestyle that is contributing to your work that doesn't feel like it's totally separate from the work that you do every day because there are those things that you can implement. All right, I think I have two other things left to talk about. Second to last thing. I love sticky notes. I recently found out Grant Cardone hates sticky notes. He thinks that they are, I need to get the real source on this, but from what I understand, he thinks that it's a messy, it leads to a cluttered situation. Sticky notes save my life and I use them very strategically and very organized. Uh, and these black ones, I mean, how freaking cool are these black sticky notes? Have, or Alexis, who also got me the lotion, got me these sticky notes. And then this cool pen that I can write on black sticky notes to actually see them. Anyway, I'm a big fan of these. I check off the things. These are like the little to-do list that I make as I'm having a meeting. I'll run a list of everything that I need to do after that meeting on a sticky note. And then I check it off after the end of the day or I bring it over to tomorrow and then check those things off and I'm constantly consolidating sticky notes. Who knew? Okay, last but not least, the whiteboard. So in the same vein, we're gonna do this little switcheroo thing. Um, in the same vein as the books and using visuals to be able to show clients or show your team what you're thinking about, the whiteboard 
is a critical element that I use constantly to explain concepts that as a leader, they're like perfectly bucketed and crystallized in my head. But our team is very much likely struggling with understanding what I'm saying so I can actually give them a visual of what I'm saying. This whiteboard is the same whiteboard that we have put in our house. It's in every office between this one and then also our Miami one. There will be one in Arizona. Huge proponent of whiteboards and just being able to leave big concepts, erase them, add new ones, continue to create like this picture. And what's so cool about this is some things I will leave on here for two or three months if it's a big project that we're working on. And then you show up one day and you're like, oh my gosh, remember when we planned that we were gonna do this? Oh, well, it's done. and it's better than we thought. And so I always take pictures of the whiteboard drawings that I make, but I use my whiteboard every single day when I'm explaining concepts to the team so that it, it's helping them actually give a visual. And if you're not a good drawer, just tell people that. Like, don't not use the whiteboard because you're not a good drawer. First of all, I'm left-handed, so whiteboards are ridiculously hard for me to write on because I have to lift my hand up so it doesn't actually, like, quite literally erase what I'm writing as I'm writing it. And my handwriting is horrible. Half the time, I'm like, what does that say? It's for the purposes of the team being able to understand and crystallize a concept that you might be talking about, but they don't actually have reality on. So with that, um, this has been really fun, but it is time for me to eat my Chipotle. I order Chipotle at the same time every day, and that's part of the consistency that I have going so that I'm able to expect the exact same meal and I'm not running around trying to think, oh, what am I gonna have for lunch? Like minimizing decisions in my life is important and I freaking love Chipotle. And today I've ordered the healthy version because I saw my ball this morning and was like, you know what, I'm going to do the right thing. And that's how all of these concepts tie together. With that, I hope you enjoyed this unique episode of Workwoman and can hardly wait to see you next week.